Salam, you're watching the International Daily Roundup brought to you by People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. The report finds US sanctions fueling rising poverty in Iran. Syrian defense forces announce the recapture of Al-Sina. Another woman dies in Poland after being denied an abortion. And Colombia passes a controversial citizen security law. In our first story, we look at a new report on the impact that US sanctions are having on Iran's economy. Soon after the Trump administration withdrew the US from uh, the nuclear deal, it proceeded to enforce a so-called maximum pressure campaign. Sweeping sanctions were imposed on Iran's key sectors, including oil and banking. A report by the Sanctions and Security Research Project argues that these measures were a weapon. They triggered high levels of inflation, which led to a marked increase in poverty. The Iranian rial has plunged to around 270,000 against the US dollar. Meanwhile, the prices of necessities like milk and eggs have risen by over 150%. According to the report, while wages have remained steady, they have been unable to cope with the inflation. As a result, even if many goods are still available, they are simply unaffordable to most people. This secondary impact of sanctions has been prominent in the prices of food. The cost of healthcare has also soared by close to 125%. The health crisis has also worsened due to overcompliance with sanctions by third parties. UN experts have found that banks and businesses have refused to engage in exempted and authorized humanitarian trade. For example, a Swedish company has stopped critical shipments of bandages to Iran. The product offers the most effective treatment against a life-threatening genetic skin disease. As per reports, around 30 Iranians have died since shipments stopped in 2018. The Kurdish-led Syrian Defense Forces have announced the recapture of Al-Sana prison in Hasaka. The facility was attacked by the Islamic State terror group last week, leading to a week of intense fighting. The SDF stated on January 26 that the last of the IS terrorists had surrendered. At least 181 people have been reported killed during the violence. Nearly 50 SDF soldiers and 7 civilians were killed in the operation coordinated by the International Security Forces. Al-Sina is estimated to have held over 3,500 suspected IS members. Fighting broke out after the group's fighters rammed two vehicles into the prison. The SDF has stated that inmates took prison employees hostage and used children inside as human shields. According to a UNICEF statement, almost 850 children are in detention in northeast Syria. Most are being held in Hasaka. The majority are Syrian and Iraqi boys, while others belong to over 20 nationalities. As per recent reports, the status of these children is not clear. However, Save the Children has stated on Monday that it has received reports the children were among the injured and the dead. The SDF's operation in and around Al-Sana was accompanied by US airstrikes. The Syrian government has condemned the civilian casualties and infrastructure damage caused by the attack. According to Middle East Eye, the fighting has also displaced close to 45,000 people in the area. The SDF stated on Wednesday that 1,000 IS members had surrendered. It added that sweeping operations were still underway in Hasaka, Deri Zor, and Raqqa. Outrage has spread across Poland following the death of a woman who was denied an abortion. 37-year-old Agnieszka T was pregnant with twins and admitted to hospital on December 21st. According to her family, the first fetus died in her womb on December 23rd. However, the doctors refused to remove it. Poland already has one of the world's harshest abortion laws. In 2020, a tribunal ruled that abortion in the case of fatal fetal abnormalities was also unconstitutional. Agnieszka's family has said that her de health deteriorated rapidly after December 23rd. The heartbeat of the second fetus stopped a week after that. Doctors still waited another two days before terminating the pregnancy as late as December 31st. Agnieszka's health continued to worsen for the weeks after until she finally passed away on January 25th. Her family suspects that she suffered septic shock. However, the hospital has not confirmed a cause of death. A protest and vigil for Agnieszka outside the Constitutional Court was being held in Warsaw. It was among a series of mobilizations under the slogan, Not One More. Agnieszka's case follows just months after the death of a 30-year-old woman named Isabella. She died of septic shock in the 22nd week of her pregnancy after doctors refused to perform an emergency abortion. More than 1,000 women have approached the European Court of Human Rights 
to change Poland's abortion laws. And finally, rights groups in Colombia have denounced a new law which they say will criminalize protests. Far-right President Ivan Duque sanctioned the citizens' security law this week. The law permits the use of weapons in self-defense against unjust aggression. People enacting such violence are protected from criminal liability. The law also increases penalties for attempts against security or transport infrastructure and police or military installations. The initial sentence of four years has now been increased to as much as 12. It also introduces punishments in case of recidivism. As reported by Brazil de Fato, social leaders or activists can be arrested for inciting violence. President Duque has also introduced a disciplinary statute and a patrol car statute for the police. The citizen security law was introduced after the month-long national strike uprising in 2021. As such, it has targeted specific forms of protest seen during that time. This includes the prohibition of roadblocks, which were widely used by indigenous protesters. The new law has raised fears of a further crackdown on social protests. The national strike itself has been marked by over 4,000 cases of police violence. Varying estimates have placed the death toll at over 70 people. That's all we have on the show for today. For more on these stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and give us a follow on all the regular social media platforms. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.